Hi there, so in this tutorial we're going to talk about some of the very basic uh, elements of creating geometry here in Fusion 360. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Sketch, click this little drop down arrow here and click Create Sketch. Now Sketch is going to be a 2D line drawing that will only exist on one of these planes. And once you put it on one of these planes, you can't move it. So just an FYI, you can totally move the geometry all you want afterwards, but uh, just to, to, to get going with the sketch, you need to uh, make a decision and then live with it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this plane here, which as you can see on my little box here, that's going to be the uh, side plane, and that's going to be front, and that'll be top. So we'll go to the side. And I'm going to go and click the, uh, the sketch here, and I'm going to just make something very simple. I'm going to make a line, and I'll just sort of draw out that line, and I can kind of continue clicking. And if you've ever done anything with splines, this will look pretty familiar. So I've got this piece of geometry here, and I can go ahead and hit, or uh, it's actually um, it's a sketch, it's not quite geometry yet. I'm going to hit stop sketch, and now we go to the 3D plane. So in order to make this into, oh, and by the way, uh, the camera movement here is going to be uh, shift and middle mouse to rotate. Shift, and, uh, let's see, uh, just middle mouse by itself will will do the move, and uh, middle mouse wheel does the uh, zooming. So I'm going to click on the face here, do a right click, and go to press pull. This is their version of extrude. And you can see I get some options that pop up here. So the first one, it's going to be one side, and I can just go ahead and pull it out. And I could hit OK if I wanted. And because there's nothing else here, the operation is going to be it's going to create a new body. Uh, if I wanted to make it two-sided, I could do that and have a separate uh, distance over there. But I prefer to keep things symmetrical as much as possible. It'll generally save work. So I'm actually going to come over here and do symmetric. And that way, whatever distance I pull the one out, the other will go. So I can go ahead and, uh, go ahead and hit OK. And now I've got a piece of geometry. So one of the cool things about this program uh, is you can go back in and edit the sketch and the geometry will update. So I'm actually going to come over here to my sketches and you can see I've got a, a little folder called sketches and a little folder called bodies. All the 3D stuff is going to be a body for the most part. And the 2D stuff is going to be sketch. So you can see the little light bulb there has been turned off. I can turn it back on if I want to see it. And I can right click on the sketch here and go to edit sketch. And we will go back to the, uh, the side plane here, and I can come back into whatever I want. So what I want to do here is go to Sketch, and then I'm going to fill it. So you can see as I mouse over these points here, it's understanding that I'm, I'm going to want to round these off. So I'll go ahead and click this one, and you can actually change the, uh, the radius of that fillet. I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And then I'm going to right click and go to Repeat Fillet. You can also just come up here and hit Fillet again if you like. But uh, this is a little bit of a time-saving maneuver. Right-click, repeat, fill it. And you can see it's actually giving a different value for each one. Uh, that is it just kind of looking at this and thinking, like, what makes sense? Uh, doing its best guess there. And these values are all totally arbitrary, so they're totally fine. So let's take a look at what's going on here. I now have some dimensions, and I have some symbols here. Now what these symbols are are constraints. So if you come over here to your sketch palette, you can see here in constraints, that symbol is a tangent symbol. So there's this curve and then these two lines coming to meet that curve. And this thing right here means if you try to move some of this stuff, it's going to try to preserve that tangency. So you know, for instance, if I did want to come in and, and move this, I can actually just click that edge, right click and go to move. And then as I do that, it's going to try to preserve all of these relationships because I have those constraints on there, which uh, is pretty cool. It can occasionally result in some pretty squirrely stuff. So if you're trying to move like one thing and, and you're seeing your mesh kind of explode, try to, try, uh, try to make sure you don't have any constraints on there that might be causing that. So let's say, okay, cool. Now I'm done with the sketch. I'm going to go to Scott, uh, stop sketch up here. And you can see that the geometry has updated which I think is pretty dang cool. So let's take a look at some of the things that we can do now with this geometry. I have some edges here. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the sketch that we just made. And I actually prefer to hide the grid, too. And there's a, another option that you can do uh, with visual style. I'm sorry, that's uh, in the camera here, 
where I think the default might be either orthographic or perspective, but what you can do is while you're in 3D mode, it's gonna have perspective on, and then as soon as you go to a side view, it'll go to orthographic. So that option, once again, is here in display settings, camera, and perspective with ortho faces. So I'm gonna come back and you can either click on the house or you can just rotate the camera holding the, uh, the shift and middle mouse button. So now what I wanna do is actually round off these edges but I want to do it, uh, I don't want to come to the sketch menu to go to fill it, I need to go to the modify menu and in here we will see we've actually got a geometry fillet. So I'm going to click that and then come over here and click this edge and to make sure that it's symmetrical I'll click this, uh, this edge as well. So you can see you can either enter a value or you can just come and start sliding this guy. Now this is actually kind of great, I'm glad it happened. It's kind of a frustrating thing but it's, uh, I'm glad that it showed up right away. So basically there's a problem here. You can see this little error that's showing up. The fillet chamfer cannot be created at the requested size. Try adjusting the size, deselecting some of the edges, etc., etc. So basically what it's saying here is there's some curve here that is foiling the, uh, the fillet operation. So I'm actually a little bit surprised to see it choking on something as simple as this, but it does happen. So what I'm going to try to do is actually come over here and we'll just put a small number. We'll just see if one works. Yeah, so even one's not working. Uh, point one maybe? Alright, well there's something going on here which is a little bit unusual. But uh, we will definitely get this to work. This is a super common operation. So we'll try something a little bit different. Rather than doing the fillet, I'm going to do a chamfer. Now, uh, I've actually been using the word bevel to describe this for a long time, so I may say the wrong word. What I mean is chamfer if it's a sharp edge, chamfer if it's a round edge, it's fillet. So we'll go to chamfer and it's the exact same idea. You select the edges that you want, and then there we go. So that was no problem, and that's what I was expecting from that fillet operation, but it was giving me some attitude. So one of the things that you can do, I'll go ahead and uh, hit OK there, and actually I bet at this point it would let me do a fillet. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to just go ahead and type, uh, type in one. So now it's no problem at all, and if I zoom in, you can see the result there is actually a pretty nice fillet and you can change the value around and do whatever you like. So one of the things that is just the very m most coolest thing about this program, in my opinion, is you can do all kinds of different operations with this piece of geometry, cut stuff out of it like, you know, Boolean type stuff for an hour and then come back to this operation right here. That was our uh, chamfer and this one here is our fillet. And I can actually, if I select this piece of geometry, you can see it gets these little three little ticks on it right there and that is uh, how you know what operation it was that created that piece of geometry so you can right click it go to edit and then type in some other number let's type in five there and you may have a lot of operations that are sort of sitting on top of that and it may break stuff and if that's the case you'll see these things turn either yellow if they're in danger or red if they're if they're straight up um, screwed up and also you'll get a little warning saying like you know you're kind of messing up your downstream stuff so just an FYI so that's a very basic introduction to how it all works together in the next lesson we'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, sketches and constraints and then maybe we'll uh, we'll get around to doing some uh, boolean type stuff with this geometry